Check this out, guys. Somebody on X says that they went to multiple different train stations in New York City and spoke with some cops. They said that it will help if the city or state can provide registered nurses who will help admit those with mental health issues. New York City has a lot of that, especially in the subways. And a lot of people who have mental illnesses in New York City are simply let out, which is causing a lot of problems. They said that when they get someone with some mental issue into the hospital, they're out within an hour. But if a nurse does it, the hospital will hold them and make sure they're okay. They also told me that NYPD used to come down with their special homeless and mental health unit a few years ago, which is now gone. They discontinue it and a lot of NYPD officers are struggling to understand why. Because I think now with New York being so chaotic and with mental illness being so widespread, I think having this homeless and mental health unit is probably super duper important. So right now you have a lot of problems on trains, bad mental health, drug issues, and if the hospitals don't do their job and cops get the correct tools, nothing will get fixed. But instead, New York will be spending millions of dollars to get 750 National Guardmen and also 250 state troopers into the New York City subway stations. Now, here's the thing. This is probably a pretty decent short-term solution for New York City, but is this a good long-term solution? Probably not. Imagine you're a tourist going to New York City or a new businessman. You go to New York subways and you literally see armed guards everywhere. Not exactly the best looking situation here. And it really just shows you that New York subway station is basically the purge and the wild, wild west all combined together. You got slash instances, a lot of violence, fights everywhere. This is not the place to be. And especially with New York being already crowded as it is, and with so many people here, people are squeezed like sardines and you do have emotions running high in many different incidences. And look at this, National Guards here, the police is here, and basically try to hold down peace. And like I said, good short-term solution to lower the crime rate, but is it a good long-term solution? Probably not. Like I said, New York and many of these cities are not solving the root of the issue. They're just constantly slapping on band-aids every single day, which is not going to help if you slap on band-aids. Same thing with San Francisco, for example. They want to get local businesses back, but instead of trying to solve the crime and shoplifting, they just do stuff like, oh, let's just add in more different pop-up stores. Let's maybe make an advertisement. These are all band-aid solutions that will probably help for the next few weeks, but not long-term. You also have New York City spending so much crazy money on the migrant crisis that I'm pretty sure they do not have money or time to make the NYPD have a special unit, which they had a few years ago. But instead, New York City is like, oh, we just trimmed the migrant related cost by 1.7 billion, but guess what? We're still gonna be spending about probably $10.5 billion to the end of June, 2024. This is a crazy amount of money that New York is spending. They also recently just spent 5.7 billion on no bid contracts. Taxpayers are being fleeced. Nobody's being happy in New York City. And I feel like the city is truly running themselves to the ground. And with so much mental illness in the subways and basically New York being managed, like it's a army looking on the subway stations and with armed guards everywhere and crime everywhere, shoplifting everywhere, no wonder places by like Miami have easily taken over, right? New York spends $10 billion on the market crisis. Miami probably spends $10 billion improving their infrastructure, getting more hedge funds, and also now starting their first trading floor. And I think as time goes on in the next decade, we're gonna be seeing a lot of traditional cities like New York, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, LA, all being overtaken by other cities like Miami could just be the next hottest trading hub. It may not be New York City anymore. When you run your city to the ground like this, cities like Miami, who do a good job at managing, will easily step up and take the crown. This is what's happening in many U.S. cities. Can New York City get back on its feet? It might. It might not. But the chances of them doing drastic changes will be very difficult right now, especially with a migrant crisis at full blast. It's very, very difficult for City Hall officials to get New York City up and running again. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you later.